Hello everyone, it's Kerry Griffiths here. Just wanted to introduce you to the serrated rope mould. Um, this came about because I had so many requests for it because you loved the plain rope. You said, can you have a serrated one? So we put our heads together here at Katie Sue Designs and created it for you. I've done it in three different sizes because I thought, heck, we've got three tiers on a wedding cake, let's have it in three sizes. So same process as you normally see. I'm gonna do the large version for you so the camera can actually pick up all of the detail because we worked really hard on getting good detail in here for you. So as you've seen me do before, cornstarch corn flour in, tap it all out just to make sure there's no excess moisture in there. I'm going to use um, the paste I normally use. As I said, it's any sugar paste or fondant brand that you like to use. I would normally say use between 500 grams or a pound of your favorite fondant or sugar paste and add CMC or tireless powder to it. So the recipe I found that works best is 500 grams or a pound of your paste with about 10 to 15 grams of CMC or Tylos. There are a few caveats here. It will depend on the humidity in the country you live in compared to the heat of your hands, to the softness or the firmness of the paste to start with. I would say try 10 grams and then if you find it's too soft and sticky, add the extra five. If you're in a very humid country, you'll have to use 15 grams. If you're not in such a humid country, maybe you'll end up with 10 grams. So if you find your paste sticks to anything, there's two things to look at. Number one, did you dust your mold? Number two, is your paste too soft and sticky? Those are the things you need to look at. So I'm gonna roll a long sausage of paste and lie it down the middle. Now, you're always gonna have excess and you're always gonna have more than you need. So be aware that you're gonna to need to do a bit of tidying up with this. I always seem to leave an excess either side. I find when I'm taking something out of a mold, if there's excess either side, the weight of that helps me demold my piece. So I turned it this way, put a bit of corn flour, corn starch on my fingers, and this is what I called walking my fingers. So I'm rocking them back and forth, but I'm working my way up the mold from one end to another. This is embedding this paste all the way down inside the mold. And then there are sections here where you have little inserts. You want to make sure that those are all nice and clean. You want to be able to see the edge of every section of the mold before you take it out. Now, if you've got it right, then you shouldn't have any excess on here. If, however, you think you need to remove any excess, there are ways to do it. You can thumb swipe, which is taking the excess off there, but I have found because of the narrowness of this mold, sometimes that causes me a problem. So what I would do is I would reach for something like a plastic knife. I never use a real knife on a mold because I don't want to damage my mold. And using my finger as pressure, I'll just skim along the top just to remove any excess. If there's a huge amount of excess, I would normally take the paste out and start again, because it's easy to move a little bit, but it's not as easy to remove a huge amount. You'll end up spending more time remolding it than you will actually just starting all over. So just quickly go along here, making sure that's nice and flat. Then I opened it up like a book just to make sure I've released the sides. This is where those end pieces will come into play because that weight will help pull it out of the mold. I'm gonna open it outwards and then walk my fingers back along the mold just as it comes out. One easy piece. And there you go. How detailed and beautiful is that? Now, as you're potentially going around a cake with this, you'll need to know how to join it. Your instinct will be to cut it directly across there. But when you join it, you'll find it's a little tough because they won't butt together. I found if I come in and cut this at an angle, as you can see there, there's a bit of an undercut there. The bit that then comes in, so obviously that one would fit, but let's pretend I've got another piece here. If I've got that undercut, when I join them together, it's far easier to conceal that join with an undercut than it is if I was to do this, which is what our instinct is, and butt them together, because you'll always get a straight line there. So my advice would be, create the little undercut and you'll get pretty much seamless joins. So I hope you enjoyed the mold. 
we're finding it very useful here very detailed just think it doesn't just have to be a rope around the bottom of a cake you could put it around a plaque on the top it could become part of a picture frame and because of the amount of detail in it it looks absolutely amazing painted in gold so see you with the next mold enjoy <laughs>